Okay, so now we have a 3D model and we have our 2D geometry as well as our Illustrator file. So we have this essentially in a part file and a DWG in two formats. So now let's see what we can do with this logo. What I've got here in Revit is a little sample drawing open here. And what I'm going to do is just bring this logo in and I'm going to put it on a table so that we can see this in 3D as though it's actually in reality somewhere. So what I'll do is I'll come up to the insert tab and I'm going to go to link CAD and now I can come back up here to my desktop and locate this 3D model. So I've got some options down here at the bottom. I'm going to preserve my colors and the layers will bring all of them in. And Revit's pretty good about detecting a unit so I'm going to keep this as auto detect and then you can orient to view. This is already oriented to the view, so I don't really have to worry about that. So in this situation, I'm going to just leave that checked for the time being, and I'm going to change the positioning from auto center to center to origin to origin. And we'll hit OK and see where that ends up. So it's saying some objects could not be imported. Use AutoCAD to convert them. We'll ignore that for the time being. And let's see if we can't find where this came in. Now that came in really, really tiny. So, as you can imagine, the logo that we created was from a very small, um, it's basically something used for graphic design. So it's coming in very tiny. Now we can come back over here and we'll just unpin that so we can move it. We can scale this at any time as well, but I'm just going to put it here so it's on that background and move it up 36 inches so we can see it. And let's see if we can't give that a scale factor. We'll give that a numerical scale factor of 10. There we go. Now we're starting to see that geometry here. So if I've got a view set up over here, let's see if I can't take a look at that camera. So that camera is pointing in this direction. I'm going to take our logo and I'm just going to rotate that so it's more in line with what we're seeing. And then let's come to that 3D view. Okay, so we can't really see it too, too well, but if we raise the eye elevation to maybe 148. Okay, so now we're looking down a little bit more. I'll just adjust the crop region. And now we're starting to see our logo in place here. So we don't need all of this. What we can do is just change that crop. And then we'll be able to zoom right in on that logo. Okay, so if we want to see that in a different shade mode. Okay, so now we're starting to see something a little bit more interesting. Now the next thing you might want to do is maybe change the material up. If we come back over here to our DWG, this is going to have the same material that we ascribed to it in our inventor file. So right now it's showing as the stainless steel. But in the DWG, I can make changes to this now that won't go back to my part file. It'll simply make the change in this file, which will then translate over to my Revit file. So for the time being, let's come back here. And if we want to change material here in AutoCAD, we'll come to the Render tab. And I'm going to come to the Materials browser. Give that just a second to open up. And maybe let's change this all back to glass. So I'm going to find a glass that has a bit of color to it. I do believe that there was a, a blue glass. I'll just say this blue reflective, that works. We'll add it to the document. 
and now we should be able to right click with our logo selected we'll choose properties and in properties now you'll see there's a material setting you can come in here and we can change that to the blue reflective because we've added it to the document so that should translate over to the entire thing let me just double check that I'm going to right click come to properties again and you can hear you can see it says blue reflective so now what we want to do so we can see that that change um, we're going to go back to our view tab change our view settings to realistic and now you'll see that we've got that that glass look to it okay so last thing I'm going to do here is just save this again and when I come back to my my Revit file I go back to the insert tab and go to manage links and now I should be able to reload this and hit OK and you'll notice now that that has changed to that glass material so that's pretty interesting and the last thing I want to do for this part is show you how you take this 3D view now if we want to take this into 3ds max design will export what's called an fbx file so that's like a live link between your revit file and your 3ds max file so let's take a look at that quick the only way that you can create one of these fbx files for a 3ds max scene in 3d is to do it from a 3d view so if you come from a floor plan and export that's where you would go to create a 2D export of your say your floor plans or your ceiling plans in this situation we actually want the 3D model so in this 3D view we'll come back up to the top where it says export and we're going to choose the FBX option oh. and I'm going to keep this on the desktop it's going to create a folder and I just want to call this logo example Okay, so this is the going to be the name of the FBX file. When I click on save, we're going to get some more options as to how this FBX file is created. So what it's going to want to do is create geometry essentially for 3ds Max using what you have here in this scene, and then when we link that into our 3ds Max scene we're going to have some options as to how it combines the materials and the different entities from our Revit model so I'm going to come up to the application menu here in 3ds Max Design and I'm going to say import and I'm going to link an FBX file so if I come back up to my desktop I should see that FBX file now created so now with that selected I'll say open and here's the dialog box that I was referring to earlier with this dialog box now you can change the presets so typically I don't combine my entities I want full control over each entity however that's going to create a larger file size so you have some options here to change these by material by category or family type so each family type as in a wall would stay as one object so we'll just say do not combine again here are your, your presets and we'll come back over here and we'll say attach this file